This is Rachel Plaster, and this is Cocaine in History. The Incas. 8,000 years ago, in the highest peaks of the Andes, traces of alkaline material of cocoa leaves were found. Northern Peru, the pre-modern home to the Incas, is the earliest evidence of cocoa leaf chewing. David Matuski, in his article, writes about the first culture to fully integrate cocoa usage, the Incan. The uses included, but are not limited to, feasts, religious rituals, work incentive for laborers and kings, and to barter and trade other valuable goods. Colonization of Incas depended on the ideal areas of growth for the cocoa plant, revealing its worth. This ranged from the Andes to Cusco, where the rainforests offer ample supplies of healthy vegetation. Additional usage of cocoa leaves were to feel warm in cold environments, to crave a hunger, boost energy, and a common side effect was, a, was boosting energy. It was a method of ritualistic practice that could combat thirst and hunger. Cocoa leaves were known to comprise the perfect components for woven Andean bags. The focus was beauty and interest of the woven baskets, rather than the direct uses of cocoa itself. Designs were heavily concentrated on the anatomy of the coca for the mochi of the Incan people. Men would carry the bags on their way to work, specifically made in pouches of intricate bags for people of higher statures. A specific bag, the coca bag, resides in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. In the voyage of 1499, Italian explorer Amerigo Vespucci wrote letters to comrades and journaled his findings of new cultures. As translated by an author at Cambridge, Vespucci wrote, In looks and behavior, they were very repulsive, and each had his cheeks bulging with a green herb which they chewed like cattle. The texts are about coca leaves chewing amongst Incans in ancient Peru. Those are his letters. The Spanish Empire. Around 1526 to 1572, during the Spanish conquest of the Incan Empire, there were numerous perspectives between the indigenous people, their culture, and coca. The colonizers had a deeply different initial vision of coca usage than most. As written in the indigenous identity and the coca leaf, the Spanish conquest prompted new discussions pertaining to the use of coca leaves in religious, economic, and social terms. The Spanish initially wanted to ban the coca usage but later adopted the plant for several commodities, such as silver production, and served as a delicacy. They also believed that it was a, an exclusive privilege of the king, find re human remains from northern Chile. This indicates that the Spanish Empire, the ones who initially attempted to eradicate the usage, participated in consumption as well. An additional example of coca usage in the Spanish Empire resolves in the Metropolis Museum of Art in New York. It's known as the coca chewer on a bench. Written in 1533, Hernando Pizarro, the half-brother of the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro, devised a letter to the Lord of Santo Domingo about the details of the trip to Peru and the authority to conquer Peru. He wrote about Francisco's men secretly chewing coca leaves themselves, even though eradication was supposed to be taking place. Egyptians. In 1992, a German toxologist named Dr. Svetlana Babylonova discovered something rather shocking in the remains of an Egyptian mummy. Henet Tai dates as early to 1000 BCE. She was a priestess, meaning she was like a princess, one of the most highly respected women in a royal family. In the 19th century, she was purchased by the King of Bavaria and later moved to the National Archaeology Museum of Lisbon, Munich, before toxicology policies were then. Large traces of cocaine and nicotine were found in the mummified remains of her hair. This offsets science in a multitude of ways since cocaine was not in e existent in Egypt at that early of a time period. The article, Cocaine Mummies in the Search for Narcotic and Historic Collections, describes the way that mummies consume cocaine in Egypt. Since it's derived from the coca leaf, it wouldn't be prevalent in Egypt since it's not grown there. This indicates that there must have been a new world trade route between the two cultures before Christopher Columbus set sail. Although coca leaves were not specifically captured in ancient hieroglyphs or texts, Egyptians have been documented as consuming plants like the blue lotus. For instance, in Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey, Odysseus and his crew are blown off the water by Poseidon, and they come across lotus eaters, chewing what is believed to be narcotic lotus flowers. Nymphia curricula, however, there is a chance that these have possibly could have been coca leaves themselves. There is the blue lotus right there. Furthermore, the article, Tradition Egyptian Medicine, employs the idea that Egyptians knew how psychology and substances could alter the mind, although it does not directly specify drugs like coca as an example, it touches on the traces of substance found in the New World setting. 
and it was not limited to that of the possibility of coca leaves. Credits. And here are the ancient texts I used. Thank you.